on video. Did you really? Yeah. That's sick. This episode of the vlog is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Squarespace's templates make creating an online identity even easier. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects, whether you're pursuing your side hustle or your main gig. In 2018, Squarespace has eight new templates. Stella, Pursuit, Impact, Blend, Pedro, Royce, Kin and Bow. You can create a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade. Squarespace provides award-winning customer service 24 hours a day. It's easy to set up or transfer your domain to Squarespace. Instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you're able to manage all your online and billing services with Squarespace. It's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to manage your products, your orders, your inventory easily. Ready to start your new business? Make it and get started with Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, go to squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy DeResta for 10% off your first website or your first domain. If you support my sponsors, I get to stay here in the workshop. So thank you. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. A lot of new things going on. Since I saw you guys last time, I built a set of paddles. First time ever in my life I made canoe paddles. I did an in-store demo at the Filson store in New York City. Had some good friends turn out. Guys, thank you for coming. I did a demo. I made one paddle completely before I went to the store just so I knew what I was doing so I could explain some stuff better. And then when I got to the store, I actually finished up a whole second paddle. They were all band saw it out and then the third paddle me and Brett finished up and this video is wrapped I'll probably post it maybe Sunday pretty cool made them out of spalted maple this was a really good learning experience I used the power planer I cheated a little bit but who's got all day to plane that stuff that stuff is hard These tables, I'm calling them boomerang tables, and they are basically like a mid-century modern table made with sapele plywood. CNC came in perfect here. Thank you, ShopBot. CNC'd out two pieces to give it two layers, so it feels nice and sturdy. I'm doing this leg making technique I picked up from Izzy Swan, and it's making the legs on a table saw. The best thing about this is that it's repeatable. You could make the same exact shape each time. Came out. Great, and now I gotta make mounting plates. We steam bent the wood around the edge and now I need to finish up those tight corners. The wood was not in a straight grain so I couldn't really make a tight, tight bend without it splitting. Problem solving is the name of the game. We'll figure it out. By next vlog, you'll be able to see the finished versions. Everything's getting filmed. It's gonna be a movie so you guys will see the process start to finish. Two boomerang tables. For my Filson appearance, I wanted to bring my hand planes to discuss how I did the paddles. I was not wanting to throw the hand planes into a leather bag and just have them clinking off each other. So I made this little toolbox, real simple, quick build. Brett suggested we do some blacksmith handles, so Brett made them, and he let me do the honors of giving the twist. So Brett, thank you very much, and uh, they're brass. Brett's perfecting this technique of heating up steel and brushing it with a brass brush, and it transfers brass onto the steel, makes it look like it's brass. If you know me, you know I love fireman axes, and this is a cool idea for me to combine a couple of tools. Customize, sand grind, and potentially chrome. And make a nice axe handle, and I'll have this little bit of an absurd fireman's axe. Seagrave axes is a type of shape that I like. It has a little triangular to cheek on the bottom. I'm going to be working on this. Uh, probably have a video out very soon on this fireman's axe. Custom fireman's axe. <laughs> I was photographed for the cover of ARC Magazine. ARC Magazine, Lincoln Electric, Craig, guys, thank you so much. I'm honored to be on the cover. 
It's going to be the cover story written by Nick Offerman. So please take a look for that. It's going to be out in a couple months, and I'm sure I'll talk about it as soon as it actually is available. It'll be available on their website, but also if you are a welder and you go to like Air Gas or any kind of place to go pick up welding supplies, the magazine is usually there for free. So check out Arc Magazine. The next issue, I will be on the cover. We shot some really cool shots, and hopefully the one where I'm holding the razor blade like this ends up being the one. So lately I've been using some new music from my buddy ZH Fabrications. Zach Herberbolts makes music as well as cool metal things. Zach and his buddy have a website called Ample Tunes and they're basically making it to cater to YouTubers like me who want cool free music. So Zach, thank you very much. And if you're up for it, go to Ample Tunes and download some music from Zach. And I think they have a Patreon that helps support their endeavors. So check out Ample Tunes right now. I was invited to be a guest judge at Make 48 Season 3. If you don't know Make 48, it's a TV series. It's more of like a documentary. Documentary is turned into a 10 episode series and you can find it on PBS. Season 1 is out. Season 2 is just about to be out. Season 3 we started taping the other night. I'm only in that first episode. My job is done but I will be on the series and it is pretty cool. They bring college students in to try and design and develop a product and one of the products is picked and that product then goes on to be actually manufactured and developed. And this year's event took place at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. Crazy cool place that cool crazy printing presses, all kinds of different types of printing presses. So of course, I was very jazzed to see that stuff. While I was in the print shop at the Baltimore Museum of Industry, it occurred to me that I had been communicating early on with a guy named Alan who lives in Virginia. I called him and it turns out at the end of the event, I went to his house to go see the print shop he's offering to give me. He's had this print shop for over 50 years. He's an elderly gentleman. He doesn't use this equipment anymore and he wants it to go to somebody that will use it. He met me through a friend. He did some research on me and now he's really jazzed for me to have his print shop. On that particular night, I just did a recon. I went to look and see. He's an incredible craftsman. He makes paper models. He does wood carving and he's done printing nearly his whole life. I'm going to be extremely honored to have his 11 by 15 Chandler and Price foot powered press. He restored it in 19... 63 and it is gorgeous i can't wait to get it and share it with you guys and when i meet him again i'm going to get him on camera we're going to share some stories he's an amazing gentleman and i'm very honored that he would want me to have his old equipment so alan thank you sir This week we put together all the ice picks. They will be available next week on the store, my store on my website. We got 50 twisted ice picks and about 130 straight ice picks. Big shout out to Patrick at Air Designs. He makes really cool rings. He's got a huge YouTube channel and he came and he spent a few days with us and he helped us with the ice picks. He was really pivotal in getting these done this week. So Patrick, great to meet you and thank you very, very much. And the siding started. We had a little bit of a problem. This siding, I actually purchased. This is no brand deal. This is me buying material. David from PC Carpentry on Instagram is the crew that is doing it. David's a, a YouTuber and an Instagrammer, so check out David. David and his crew are putting it up, and we realize there's something wrong with the siding. We go through the whole pack. We go through three packs, and there's something wrong with every piece. There's bubbles. There's damage. We don't know exactly how or why it happened, but they replaced it. The distributor took it all back and brought back new packs. And so now we're back in track. We lost about three days. At the end of this vlog, we're gonna have almost one side up. 
we're back on track. The electric, the siding, then eventually Benjamin Moore is going to supply us with some paint. So things are moving along swiftly. We filled in the trench. We're getting ready for the pull. South wire is going to come and we're going to do the pull. It's 350 feet of wire is going to get pulled through a four inch tube. I can't wait to see this actually happen. I'm learning so much about electricity through Patrick and the process of installing electric. It is complicated as hell and there's so many details to know to do things precisely, but thank God I have Patrick with me. Patrick, thank you, brother. You've really helped me along this journey and thank you for holding my hand while we do this together. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Let's see it. Wow, that is sexy. Thank you, Jackman. I love it. I'm working on more of these. A lot of people ask if I'm going to make more. I made five. I am going to actually make more. I'm working on getting a good price. Once I have updates on this and how and where, I'll definitely talk about how I'm going to sell them and where I'm going to sell them. I want you guys to meet somebody who's a new friend of mine, Steve Pitbull. Steve was one time on the History Channel. He's looking to maybe get on YouTube or get back onto TV. Steve's an amazing guy. He's got a lot of passions, and one of them is collecting lathes and machining tools. How long have you been collecting? 18 months. That's it? That's it, 18 months, man. Get the hell out yep. of here. <laughs> yep, I got hooked. I you're, got hooked. You're a little it, it OCD just, then. Yeah, I got a little bit of a problem, but it's a good one, you know? It, it's better than doing drugs or something like that. I love it. Little guys with their kids. I love it when young guys are into it. Young kids. I got fans from YouTube that are 14, 15 that call me out of state. They ask for my help. I try to lead them in the right direction. There's nothing better than a young kid who can use his hands. What got you into collecting lathes and milling machines? You know, I've always been hooked on tools. Always been hooked right. on tools. Right. Ever since I was a kid, I would take everything apart in the garage. I'd get in trouble for it. I'd steal my father's tools that he had. I'd, I'd just do whatever. And then what happened was I took metal shop. Then I worked at a couple of machine shops as a kid. Oh, yeah. Time went by and I always wanted a lathe. And I never had one. And I always wanted one. Then all of a sudden, I found that little baby Southland, 1927 Southland, and I yeah. bought it. Then I bought another one. Then I saw how I could make money flipping them. Do you know that everything you're looking at is absolutely free? It costs me nothing because of the amount of money I made? Oh, it's I made eighty thousand dollars in eighteen months selling machinery. Buying and flipping. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what that's how I did it. So all the stuff is free. Shaper. I'm sorry. A bomb's got one of these that's got like a forty inch swing. The big one, right? Yeah. They're insane. And I saw one, a big one for five hundred dollars on you. I, I get a call from a real estate lady. Hey, come on over. I heard you want to buy tools. There's a scrap guy waiting if you don't want them. He's offering $1,000. Offer something over that. You can have him. I go to the house. The old man's sitting there. He's about 80 years old. He had a stroke, but he could communicate. His wife's there. His kids are there. I walk in the house, and the old man sees it. I didn't know how to use the stuff. And I said, did you make this mill? This, this, is a, this vertical attachment? He was very happy that I knew this stuff. He yeah. started getting choked up. He got out of his chair. He started walking me around. And the scrap guys are waiting outside. And I look at them, and I look at the machinery. I said, uh, look, I'm going to give you $5,000 on this stuff, and I'm going to double my money. I just want to be up front with you. Their mouths hit the floor. There's no way I was giving this guy a thousand or twelve hundred dollars. I got a South Bend 10K with every attachment, rigid alone, and never out of the basement. I sold for three grand. Right. So I told him, I said, I'm making money, but I got to be fair. I'm going to make what you're going to make. Right. I'm not going to give you eleven hundred dollars. Right. So I go outside to the scrap guy. Now I'm pissed because I see a scrap guy throwing shit in the garbage. Oh, forget. I said, listen, if I ever see you at the scrap yard, <laughs> I'm going to bust your ass for throwing a machine in the garbage. Yeah. I said. Gave him my card. I said, if you call me, I'll pay you more money. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Him and his guy. I said, anytime you find a machine, you call me. And they called me once. I got something from an old rusty 10K. I paid 100 bucks for it. That was beat. But, you know, they, they throw this shit in the garbage. And it, it, it makes me sick. Oh, I need to. It destroys. These are the best signs right here. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. 
three years old. Unbelievable. Isn't it great? Beautiful. Four on the tree. This is beautiful. Wow. Doing cars with cars. And we laugh. It starts up every day without fail. These cars, we have problems wow. with. Wow. <laughs> $500. I'm sitting at my desk. I'm looking at the cameras. A flatbed comes driving by with two of them on the back. I know where it's going. It's going to Gershaw, right? That's the scrapyard. I jump on my Harley. I burn my leg. Down the sidewalk. I jockey through the streets. I beat him to the scale. I get right in front of the truck and I lock up the rear brake and I put my hand up. Guy's looking at me. I go, thousand for both. He gives me a thumbs up. He puts the truck in reverse. He backs the two of them off the scale. He brought them here. First day we got this, this thing started right up. No rust. 93,000. Why would anybody get rid of this? Because people are idiots. Stupidity is everywhere, as you can see. <laughs> people have no value for quality. This is America. Every, everybody wants now, ram down their throat, Chinese garbage, they don't care, and they want it now, and, and then they want to dispose of it. Love and respect to my friends at American Rotary. They sent me this new product they have. It's called the Amp. You do not need an electrician. All you need is a 50 amp plug and you are in business with three phase. It is incredible. We turned it on. It thing worked the second we plugged it in. It's really cool. And American Rotary set up a discount code. So if you go to their website to buy this amp, type in the discount code DURESTA10. You will get a discount. Chris, American Rotary, guys, thank you so much. I am dusting off the relics and we're getting them powered up. So exciting. <laughs> So that was my last two weeks. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. See you in a couple days.